Hello everybody, welcome to another great episode of Hillbilly Select Reviews, where I do every kind of whiskey in the world, every alcohol, every liquor, every liqueur, every wine, and beers, coffees, teas, everything us adults love, love. And today, I'm excited, okay, I'm excited because I've been doing some Compass Box whiskeys, all right? It'll be under my Scotch playlist, and now I'm doing something I think I'm really going to enjoy. Um... Uh, the Pete Monster. Something called the Pete Monster has got to be. So here it is, very light. You know, they don't, uh, anyway, let's take a look at that uh, design first. All right, look at that. Look at the Pete Monster. Look at it. Oh, yeah, baby. So it's, uh, what is it, 46% ABV, uh, 92 uh, uh, proof. Uh, they don't color any of their whiskey. They, they non-chill filter everything. It was started in 2000. Uh, by a guy who used to be the um, marketing director for Johnny Walker. He traveled all over England giving out samples and building his brand. He's known for going out there a little bit on some of his stuff. I've done some cool stuff from the Compass Box. you got to be all under the playlist. Attached to this video, all my beautiful scotches. And this says, as far as this Peep Monster goes, in 2019 we started dressing the Peep Monster in a new label. Yeah, baby, the design stems from our 10th anniversary limited release and when we um, evolved the recipe, we couldn't resist reprising this design from Mark Burkhart to accompany it. All batches of the Peat Monster released since 2019, which this includes, now feature this specially, uh, specially commissioned artwork, which you just saw. Uh, still very much a whiskey for those who love big, rich, smoky, peaty malts. Our latest version of the Peat Monster is older and more elegant than before. Hmm. Inspired by feedback from smoky whiskey lovers, our new painting label of the Peep Monster incorporates single malts with a more aromatic and grateful style of smokiness. We have sought to retain the peaty intensity for which the Peep Monster has long been celebrated, whilst creating a depth um, and elegance not seen before. What the smackaroonies, non-chip filter, no color added, 46, we already went over that ABV. John Glazer is the uh, lead whiskey maker. Hmm. Well, let's see what the hell's going on with this. With this right here. Yes, sir. Now, I've done this. is my third compass box. You got to check it out. You got to check it out. I got some great scotches I'm doing. Yes, I do. So, on the other day, I'm interested in buying. It's a... Uh, 375 milliliter uh, bottle of 30, I think 32, 32 or 33 year um, doers, four casks, um, I don't know, it just sounded so amazing, I was like, oh, and it was so, no color added, the thing was almost black, um, fantastic, I gotta get it, I gotta get it. But for now, let's concentrate on the peat monster, will you please? Just wash the glass, all right? It's so very light, but like I said, they don't uh, they don't color this baby. So very you saw it here, very light, and it looks almost clear. I don't know what you're looking at. It's a it's a yellow uh, color. Lightest of the peat monsters that uh, of the compass boxes that I've had. Good God, man! No, it's it's. <laughs> it's got a medicinal, iodine, obviously smoke, obviously peat. <laughs> Oddly enough, I like it. I like the smell. Wow. A lot of people wouldn't like this. Scotch drinkers. Oh, see, now it's developed. See now. That's going to change in the glass. And like I always say, so after I get done here, I sip this for an hour, the rest of this little bottle, and it changes and I'm picking stuff out and trying to train my palate. I want to come back and tell you all about it. So let me just tell you now, this is going to develop. It's already developing. That medicinal smell I got is already underlying with some uh, sweetness that I wasn't getting at first. No way, no how. Got to work on this. Even some of the underlying fruit through that smoky, dirty, P. 
pity medicinal bomb it smells all day this is what one of my friends would call an ashtray smell but it's not an ashtray or an ashes off of one hell of a cigar how about that or one great pipe tobacco that's one out that's in the pipe now and you can still smell the original you know the burnt tobacco you know the ashy smell yes but the underlying it didn't burn all the way through and it was a good tobacco with some some great flavors and smells and oh. see you got to get all that out of you got to take your time you can't just smell a little bit say i smell somebody's all right i better taste some sit here all damn day my fruit on apple pear type thing going on all right let me taste it mm -mm. Mm. see now you don't get all that well okay so initially you get like a sweetness you get fruit and i'm like wow after all that smell that medicinal and that big smoky peaty nothing and then the aftertaste is a really nice it has that medicinal that iodine's there with some with definitely like you took a pipe again a, a draw of a, of a say more of a pipe with really great aromatic tobacco right with a fruitiness with a great smell and flavor but it's tobacco and it burns and you get the tobacco afterward aftertaste so you're getting the flavor blow out the smoke and you got the smoke on there and it's a burnt ash smoky taste but this has a little iodine on top of it medicinal type thing mixed in but you're getting those original beautiful flavors like you do in a, po a pipe especially maybe a cigar i'm not as trained on a cigar but a pipe's easier to pick out the flavors for me and that's how i'm going to describe this so you're getting that original initial oh that tobacco smells so good Ooh, and then afterwards What's hanging on your tongue? Same thing, same thing. You like it or you don't, I guess. That's a pretty damn obvious statement, but. That butterscotch, that fruit, that sweetness, balanced and followed by that smoke. I didn't get the iodine this time. That smokiness, that ash. That smoke peat over the grains. <sighs> Very good. But I've always kind of started, I started out, my first whiskey was scotch, and so I always have an affinity and a love for scotch. Live in bourbon country, I've had some of the finest bourbons in the world. I really have, and I continue to have, because you know, a lot of my friends really. And I love bourbon. Bourbon, you know, I've gotten um, really. Uh, Used to it, developed a hell of a taste for bourbon. Um, but I think I will always, my first love, my first love will always be Scotch whiskey. All right? I can appreciate every other kind of whiskey. And I do. And I review it. And I, I, I appreciate it. I appreciate the art and the effort and the flavors and the style that goes into it. And it's easy to do. It's easy to appreciate that. But I'll always have my affinity for scotch. Uh, this was a wonderful series of compass box. Beautiful. The spice tree, the story of the Spaniard, and the peat monster. The peat monster, here we are. The spice tree had American and French oak, both. Um, and the story of the Spaniard, uh, it was aged in Spanish wine casks. Great series. Beautiful selections. Just fantastic. Just, just, just nice. So check them all out. I'll have them all attached to my uh, Scotch playlist. Check my other whiskey playlist out. I got every kind of whiskey on here. All right, everything. So thank you for being here. If you're still here, thank you so much. Please subscribe. Help me out. Keep those numbers going. Keep the analytics rolling. If you're here, you've done me a hell of a favor watching this. Hit the thumbs up. Give me a comment, anything, and uh, share with your friends if you can. You know, let's, let's grow the channel. That's what I want to do. Uh, I keep getting more and more bigger and better scotches and all kinds of whiskeys and everything that I review, all right, for you all. So from Hillbilly Select Reviews, everybody, I will see you all on the next one.